okay, I'm just gonna put this out there. I think this painting is haunted. You wanna go deeper? All that, all that, all that wicked. Okay, so here's the backstory. Nobody really close to me had ever died until I hit 44. And then all of a sudden, I found myself surrounded by death. In 2016, I attended like six funerals. The last and most painful was the death of my mom in, in November that year. So obviously it was literally all I could think about. But you know, for me, when, when, when something is disturbing or unbearable and it keeps repeating itself in my head, I immediately start rearranging and orchestrating it into some kind of creative project, almost like cutting it into a puzzle and scattering the pieces. Because I think my mind wants to untangle something and figure everything out so it can't happen again. You know, it's a little irrational, but adapting it in some way lets me live with this dark theme for as long as I need to be with it without getting emotionally wrecked by the fact that my mom is gone. You know, does that make sense? So I was reading about themes associated with death and mythologies from different cultures. I came across the Japanese myth of the Shinigami. Okay, what is Shinigami? In a nutshell, it's the Japanese version of the Grim Reaper. There's different variations, but in my paintings, I imagine them being like a group of phantom-like creatures who basically escort people to and from the next realm. Eventually, the Shinigami figures in this series took the shape of courtesans in a 1920s opium den. You know, because they inhabit that space between life and death. And I also thought of those old photographs from the early part of the 20th century of mediums coughing up ectoplasm during seances. And I was trying to figure out how to incorporate that. If you've seen those photographs, it looks like gauze or some material is kind of unfolding out of the ears and mouths of the mediums. But I was looking for something a little more mystical looking. You know, I didn't want it to be smoke or steam. Eventually, I stumbled across these photographs of ink being spilled into water. And it made these really interesting shapes that seemed unearthly. So that became part of the visual for the Shinigami Opium Den. Now, yeah, sometimes it felt a little weird to make up a story like this out of my mom dying, but I, I really think this was my way of removing myself and my family so I could think about death without being overcome by that sense of loss that was just so thick and damp in the air. It's just losing my mom was something I've dreaded since as far back as I can remember. So there was all this built up terror and anxiety. I just threw all that into creating this fantasy. And I worked relentlessly on those paintings. I mean, I actually did two solo shows that year, which is crazy. I mean, I couldn't sleep anyway. And it, it, it felt really important, probably because it had all that connective tissue to my mom. And I wanted so much for it to be elegant and this beautiful requiem for her. I mean, I remember being in palliative care beside her bed and just thinking this is it this is that moment in life I never felt I could come to terms with like imagining what she was going through and you know you really felt death in the corners of the room and we all just sat there beside it quietly it was slowly like coiling itself around my mother that's how it felt to me I think that's actually how it came across in these paintings this cold austere mystical serpent that you just cannot negotiate with Okay, so all those paintings are gone now. I have one left from that series and it was never shown publicly. I've shown it on my website and stuff, but I, it just felt different from the others, you know, and she didn't really fit in the style of the other pieces. I think it was way more of a just stark visual expression of my own fear of death. When I was little, sometimes a bunch of us kids and teenagers on the street we lived on would play this game where at night we all held hands and we'd walk around someone's house without looking back and someone from the group would break off, then one by one, each person would be grabbed from behind. You couldn't look back no matter what, you know, and it was horrifying. <laughs> we loved it. For some reason, I think of that game when I look at this painting. She's considering her own death, caught in that transitional moment between depression and acceptance, and she sees her own fragile place in the world and that vulnerable spider hanging from the web. And from behind, the Shinigami sort of starts enfolding her. So I was working on this painting during all the other pieces from the Shinigami series, but I left her unfinished for a while until I bought 
this 150 year old building and set up my work studio on the main level. When I finally went back to finish her, something weird happened. Now I've never in my life dropped a painting in my studio or like had a mishap around where I work. This painting has fallen three times. First fall, it was not damaged, thankfully. The second fall, there was some damage and I had to repaint some parts of it. The third fall was so violent that it couldn't be salvaged. I tried fixing it, I just, I, I couldn't. These were falls that happened in the stillness of my studio. I didn't bang into it. There was no earthquake, no sudden gust of wind. These windows don't open. I installed very sturdy shelves for the work to sit and dry on. And I placed the work on those shelves very carefully. And only one painting in all this time has come tumbling down from the ledge. Not once, not twice, but three times, you know, like I'm just sitting there painting and all of a sudden, thwack, I, 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 I have no explanation. So I put it away. And eventually I came across it as I was like reorganizing. I just decided to frame her as she was. Now she's framed and hanging in the Red Gallery. Now, over the years, I've had interested collectors inquire about this piece, and I've always just said, you know, it's not available. Well, I've decided to put this odd, lost B-side from the Shinigami series up on the site. Yes, it has abrasions and imperfections from her mysterious falls. You know, I used to think I won't let it leave my studio because it's not how I intended it to look. But I've kind of come to the conclusion that maybe it's not really flawed after all. Almost as if some unseen influence wanted this painting buried. Maybe it's somehow fitting that the final layer of this very dark painting about death would be a thin blanket of dirt.